Hello everyone, welcome to the course on supply chain digitization. This course is offered by faculty from IIM Mumbai. This module is going to focus on supply chain segmentation. If you remember our previous discussions, we have started our uh, initial discussions about supply chain challenges, what are their types and how they keep on changing depending upon the different types of supply chains. Also. As supply chains are getting complex, are getting bigger, how these challenges keeps emerging in different ways. So one of the very easy way of looking into this challenge is can we break these challenges into smaller segments and that is what we are proposing over here that we can have supply chain segmentation as a very interesting strategy where the supply chains can be taken as segments and accordingly the corresponding supply chain strategies can be implemented to manage that particular segment. We have seen in previous sessions about the need of supply chain segmentation and also the various ways in this uh, the various ways by which we can have uh, strategies for making supply chain segmentations. You can see from this figure that when, while creating the different types of segmentation, we can follow different types of strategies. We can have an inventory based segmentation or a demand based segmentation, value chain based segmentation, channel segmentation, geographic segmentation, product segmentation or customer segmentation. This is just a very broad list of the ways by which the segmentation can be done. However, remember that while trying to propose, this, uh, propose the strategies for this, we do not have to consider only one type of segmentation and then provide the solution. Instead of that, there should always be a consideration of uh, including all the possible ways of segmenting the supply chains and trying to understand the need of the supply chains and that helps us in critically deciding the type of uh, requirement for managing that particular segment in a given supply chain. So if we understand that particular character 6, it can be easily translated into the roles and responsibilities of the different supply chain drivers which are associated with the supply chains. So if we look into the type of segments which are being created, it can be translated in deciding the role of facilities, transportation, inventory, sourcing, pricing and information which are our key drivers and which we have already discussed in our previous module. So we understand now that segmentation can be done in different possible ways in a given supply chain. However, for deciding the right strategy for managing your supply chain, it's always important to see the combination of the segmentations and trying to understand the behavior of the supply chain and this can be translated in deciding the role of the different drivers of the supply chain. Going forward, it is a very interesting concept which has already been covered in past and we will try to reiterate the fundamentals for the same. So if we have to decide what is the right supply chain for a given product, this is a very interesting and a very important question for looking into the supply chain requirement. So when the question is about what is the right supply chain, it is very interesting or very important that we look into the type of product that is required to be flowing in your supply chain and parallelly what are your priorities to, which are decided by the supply chain. Remember the type of the product and the priority of the supply chain is somewhere being linked with the strategy 
or the competitive strategy that we have discussed in our previous session. So, if we can create the product segmentation as functional or innovative which can help us in understanding the nature of the product, maybe it can help us in deciding the type of supply chain which can be offered for the same. If you remember from the previous sessions, we have already uh, done lot of discussions around efficient and responsive supply chain. So, do we have any solution over here which tries to match the type of product or the nature of the product and or what type of supply chain is suitable for that particular type of product whether it is efficient or whether it is responsive. So, we are trying to match two concepts right now. One is coming from the segmentation that is your supply chain segmentation and we are trying to say over here that we are working on product segmentation which divides our product as functional or innovative products and once we understand the type of the product what are the uh, what are the priorities in the supply chain that can be provided to manage that particular product so if we see over here let us first try to segment our product as functional or innovative by following certain characteristics Again, this is a very standard way of looking into our uh, products or looking into the nature of the products and here the businesses can be very creative to add more and more parameters. So, following some basics around it, if we understand the nature of the demand and we can see that the product has got a very stable demand which remains constant and has got very low uncertainty, then we can say that this type of product belongs to a functional product. Whereas, if the product has got a volatile demand or uncertain demand, then this is having the characteristic of an innovative product. The functional product have always got a longer uh, product life cycle and that is why this can easily be seen that for managing a product which is quite stable have got large uh, have got longer uh, life cycle what should be the supply chains for that and similarly if we talk about innovative products they are these products are something which has uh, recently been introduced in the market maybe there is some change in the technology maybe there is a uh, introduction of uh, new material or quality has improved or so on which typically does not last for a very long time and that is why it, uh, it generally ends up with the shorter life cycle. So, we can compare very easily these two uh, options uh, with a small example. But as we know all our electronic products that we are using nowadays especially our mobile phones they keep uh, the companies keep offering new varieties of uh, mobile phones with improved technology and the time gap between the two products being offered is reducing nowadays and every new product which is being offered has got better characteristics has got better technology and this is leading to the shorter product life cycle for the same and that is why thus this product can be easily categorized as a innovative product over here whereas the functional products as it is uh, this majorly belongs for uh, products which has got very long life cycles. Uh, a simple example can be like steels which are standard products have got very stable demands mostly and obviously they are in use uh, in different forms this which is leading to longer life cycle for them. So, uh, going forward what about lead time for these products again for stable products lot of efforts goes on in consolidation and coordination and the focus is always on cost. So, this adds to the lead time 
and the lead time increases for the for functional products whereas innovative products being uh, uh, like the life cycle as very short for the innovative products these are generally having shorter lead times and it is always expected that they are uh, available to the customer as soon as the demand is there for it the stock out rate uh, for the functional products are quite low so sufficient amount of inventory is always available to ensure that the product uh, never goes uh, unavailable for the customers whereas the innovative products as the demand is quite uncertain quite volatile uh, there is a high possibility that the stock out rate is or is high for them uh, because of the simple reason of uh, higher uncertainty in demand and for shorter product life cycle. Uh, the product varieties that are being offered for the functional products are quite low because of the stable demand the same pro products are being used again and again by the uh, customers and not much variations are expected in these products as I already mentioned to you about the example of steel uh, that can be quoted over here and similarly when we talk about innovative products as the product life cycle is short the demand is getting uncertain and uh, because of the reasons like introdu introduction of new technology introduction of new material or so on the innovative products has to be offered with higher varieties so that the companies can sustain in the market and that is their strategy at the end so if we compare now the strategies for the these two type of products we can very easily say that the functional products are focused more on cost and innovative products are focused more on flexibility or responsiveness. Let us try to connect all our discussion so far about segmentation and then what is the supply chain for it. So we have already discussed about the possible uh, product segmentation and if we can uh, refer to our previous discussions we can see that depending upon the type of the product which is uh, which is there uh, we can decide that whether our supply chain is required to be efficient or responsive the efficient and responsive supply chains we have already discussed in our previous sessions also so we know that the efficient supply chains are always cost efficient and their production strategy is actually forecast driven because of stable demands not much uncertainty in such uh, products the production strategy is forecast driven the lead time is generally long and a very simple example like your everyday household products which has got a very stable demand and uh, accordingly the whole characteristics can be seen how it is applicable whereas if we have products like consumer electronics which are offered with high technology for such type of products the responsive supply chains are more suitable and uh, here a responsive supply chain is expected to be more flexible and responsive and it is driven by the demand not by the forecast as the demand is or is highly uncertain for these type of uh, for particularly for uh, this particular product uh, the lead time is expected to be short so going forward if we combine all our discussions that we have done so far what is the match between the functional products uh, and the type of supply chain and similarly for innovative product what is the best type of supply chain so we can see from this figure that for the functional products which are quite for quite stable products and which has got a stable demand the match is that the best type of supply chains for them is the efficient supply chain whereas for the innovative products where demand are not quite stable have got higher uncertainty the product life uh, cycle is generally short so we can see that for such innovative products the best strategy is uh, 
to have a responsive supply chain. So, if we convert this efficient and responsive supply chain in a way this strategy which is talking about efficient supply chain is a push strategy and for having a responsive supply chain the strategy which a supply chain can follow is a pull strategy. We have seen that the innovative product is actually looking for the responsive supply chain and we can see that having there is a huge benefit of having a responsive supply chain for innovative products because it is uh, able to fulfill the requirement on a, a timely basis whereas when we talk about the functional products which has got stable demand the best solution is to have uh, is to have efficient supply chain which uh, which does not need high flexibility but it is focusing more on ensuring that the product is made available to the customer with minimum cost. So, let us try to look into this push and pull strategy which we have discussed in the previous slide and this is quite a popular strategy. Let us see a push and a pull how these strategy works and what is the difference between these two strategies. So, when we talk about push strategy this is nothing but all the processes in the supply chain are actually driven by the forecast and they are working or functioning as per the information that they have received about the demand in a continuous manner. So, we can see that the goods are being produced at the production site and they are transported or you can say it is pushed throughout the supply chain which is actually driven by the forecast or the predictions of the demand. So, we have already seen in the previous slide that the push strategy is beneficial for the efficient type of uh, supply chain and which can be implemented easily for a functional product where the demand is quite stable and uh, uh, it is forecast driven. So, we have connected everything so far. We have understood about the products, the supply chain segmentation, the product segmentation, the type of supply chain which is used for it and now we are trying to connect it with the push and pull strategy. So, talking, of, talking about the characteristics of push strategy, it is forecast driven, it is very beneficial in case your product has got high volume requirements. So, basically it is for mass production, uh, inventory accumulation is an important characteristic for it. There is very limited scope of customization as already seen with the definition of functional products. But the initial investment is quite high for this case. In terms of its implementation, what challenges can be seen is that it has very limited scope for managing the variability in the demand as it is mainly applied for products which has got uh, stable demands. Uh, and one of the challenge associated with it is that if the products are not being sold, they are carried for a very long duration of time and this results uh, into uh, the inventory being obsolete. There is not very uh, high scope of being responsive in this case and that is why always remember when there is not a focus on responsiveness then push strategy is the best strategy. Talking about the pull strategy is the opposite of the push strategy as you can see from here and in this strategy all the functions in the supply chain whether it is production or where, whether it is distribution everything is driven by the customer demand and depending upon the demand which the supply chain receives the goods will get manufactured at these production sites and accordingly the distribution will also be planned. So, we can see that the complete processes are generally demand driven. The focus over here is more on providing customization to the consumers. Uh, the responsiveness is again a very important characteristic of the pull strategy 
and uh, there is a very low risk uh, uh, associated with the obsolescence of the inventory uh, the resources uh, utilization the resources are required to be efficient for managing the pull strategies in terms of the challenges over here it is very important to manage the uh, lead time for this uh, particular strategy and the coordination is important the demands are uncertain whereas sometimes there is a challenge related to the availability of the production there are certain limitations on the production which again becomes a challenge for managing the pull strategy so if we integrate everything now the push and pull strategy can we apply a push and pull in combination for a given supply chain then we can see that this can be done but it totally depends upon the uh, the uh, demand which or the product which are required to be fulfilled so if we have a supply chain which starts from the suppliers and then ends at the consumers it is important that we understand that what is the requirement of the customers and accordingly how the whole supply chain should work to complete this customer's requirement if the demand has got higher stability the overall uh, supply chain can work with the push strategy where all the players in the supply chain can simply follow a push strategy and every uh, function can keep doing their work and the product once manufactured will be pushed to the distributor once uh, the distributor will again push it towards the retailer and again because the customers are having a steady demand the products are getting uh, consumed at the retailer end as well so we can see that this is a very simple push strategy which is being implemented throughout the supply chain the opposite of it will happen through the pull strategy where the customers have a requirement which needs to be fulfilled by the supply chain and depending upon the demand that the customer is looking for depending upon the level of customization the consumer is looking for the whole supply chain has to accordingly react and the uh, accordingly according to that demand the every player every player in the supply chain has to decide their role but in reality in practice there is never a pure push strategy or a pull strategy there is always required to be a combination of push and pull strategy so it's very interesting to see that from which side of the supply chain we can have a push strategy or which part of the supply chain can have a pull strategy so we can see that there is a boundary in a given supply chain which actually clearly divides the whole supply chain into two parts the one part over here of the supply chain we can see from this figure is following a push strategy and the other part of it is actually following a pull strategy so when to follow for the push strategy and again the next question is when to look for pull strategy so in a supply chain that part of the supply chain which is associated with the low uncertainty will have a push strategy whereas the remaining part which has got higher uncertainty will follow a pull strategy to understand this push and pull boundary let us look into this two examples and uh, let us look into the definition of this push and pull boundary into more detail so we are uh, we are looking into the push and pull boundary where this boundary exists and how do we understand that which part of the supply chain is following a push strategy and which part of the supply chain is following a pull strategy let us consider this example where we have a type of vehicle which is being offered by the company in different colors so we know that starting from the suppliers to the manufacturing or the assembly lines and till the distributors the business or the co the company can follow simply a push strategy where the vehicle type remains same 
and because the vehicle type is same or constant the suppliers know that what is expected accordingly they will keep their raw material and the components ready parallelly the manufacturing is also responding to that the whole uh, demand is uh, the, the, whole, the demand information is available at the manufacturing as well it is properly forecasted and the assembly line is accordingly preparing for the same and again they can easily implement a push strategy at the assembly lines as well and the product or the vehicle is made available at the distributor end but after the distributor what is happening next so we know that the vehicle is now available at the distributor but it is available in a simple color in one color only so what can be done over here to offer more and more customization to the customers so from this points as you can see from here there is a push and pull boundary till distributors the product are uh, the whole supply chain is following a push strategy but once the distributors have received a standard vehicle which has got standard uh, characteristics here the customers can add their requirement and that can be passed on to the distributors suppose customers want the vehicles to be uh, want their vehicle to be painted in a specific color or there is a requirement that the customer want some specific uh, seat uh, type or some uh, other type of related uh, product requirement is there so that requirement is uh, being translated into the level of customization which customer want that information is actually leading to the pull strategy which is being translated to the distributor the distributor is fixing those elements is trying to color the vehicle in the choice of the customer is trying to put on those additional uh, component which customers want and then the delivery is made to the customer so we can see that till the distributor everything is was everything was following a very standard process uh, all the suppliers manufacturers and distributors were knowing their roles pretty well and they were ensuring that they are able to offer the standardized products uh, standardized vehicle till the distribution till the distributor end but as soon as the distributor has received this standard vehicle all the customization requirement from the customer end is passed and is implemented at the vehicle which is then being uh, done and then the product is uh, given to the customer so we can clearly see from here that how push and pull boundary is uh, helping us in managing the customization requirement from the customers as well now the question is can where can where to put this push and pull boundary it is totally driven by the level of the customization requirement this is one key element which helps us in deciding the push and pull boundary the second part is how do we manage this so if we uh, the closer this push and pull boundary is towards customers it is uh, the complexity involved with the supply chain considerably reduces though it is complex but still the closer this push pull boundary is towards customer the complexity is considerably less but if we are moving this push pull boundary towards the suppliers that is we are trying to introduce more and more customization into the products that leads to higher uh, level of complexity we can see this is just one example however there are different ways of deciding Uh, the push pull boundary where it can be kept so this is about customization let us look into one more example to understand the push pull boundary so we are referring back to the example of automobiles once again and here you can see that the push and pull boundary is between suppliers and manufacturing or the assembly lines but this particular automobile company is following a very different uh, approach now their their strategy is to offer 
different vehicles in different type uh, point of time which are customized as per the customer requirements and accordingly the whole production schedule is made and the complete supply chain is designed to take care of this. So, we can see from here that the requirement about the customer is uh, more dependent upon the type of components or the raw materials which are being used which ensures that the process uh, which ensures that the, uh, the customers get their products as per the requirements. So, here when we are bringing the different type of custom uh, the different type of components to be managed the suppliers have to follow a pull strategy which ne they need to ensure that they are making uh, the components available as per the customer requirements as per the type of products which are required to be made to be made. But when we look into the manufacturing or assembly lines and then to the distributors and then to the customers the processes at these levels are quite standardized. The assembly lines knows that which knows how to make that particular uh, automobile and that is why depending upon the components that they have received there is a standard set of uh, activities which is required to be done and that is why we can say that it is continuously working following a push strategy. The distributor knows their role very well and once they have got the vehicles to be delivered they just have to follow their uh, schedule of transportation and without any specific uh, requirements to be seen they just simply can push the vehicles or they can simply push the automobiles to the respective customers. So, we can see from this example that the pull strategy is at the supplier's side between uh, that is the push and pull boundary is between the suppliers and the manufacturing whereas the other components uh, whereas, uh, whereas the other players of the supply chain are quite uh, stable and they are having a push strategy throughout the supply chains. With the help of these two examples we can find it out very easily that both push pull boundary can exist between any two players in a given supply chain and depending upon the type of the customization requirement the position of the push and pull boundaries can be decided. In terms of managing this uh, what is the best strategy? So, this can be effectively managed by carrying buffer inventory at those supply chain players which are uh, a key party to this push pull boundary. So, we can say that the critical role is played by the buffer inventory which can also be uh, looked as following your postponement strategies for uh, ensuring that you are able to provide customized services. So, we have linked so far the different types of uh, segmentation which are uh, uh, the different types of sub supply chain segmentation strategies, how uh, product segmentation can be connected with the right type of supply chain and knowing the type of supply chain which type of strategy is beneficial whether it is push strategy or pull strategy and in any given supply chain where can we have the boundary that is the push pull boundary which helps us in achieving the target of uh, uh, fulfilling the customized demand from the customers by managing buffer inventory between these uh, players across these boundaries. So, this is the summary for today's session with this we will close this part. Thank you everyone have a nice day.